Okay, hello once again. Des right here with another mini tutorial lesson, whatever you want to call it, uh, for touchdown profile creation. Uh, this one is going to be all about uh, using jQuery UI to create a tabbed uh, multi tab interface um, for your touchdown profiles. Um, the first thing I just want to uh, talk about is jQuery itself. I mean, that, the the name jQuery. I'm sure some people have heard it, some people won't. But there'll be a large proportion of the people don't even know, you know, what the hell it is. Um, jQuery is a is a project to create um, a framework, JavaScript framework, um, to allow developers such as myself to to be to rapidly develop um, websites, web applications. Um, they include things like animations and effects and um, interactions with uh, external services using uh, what they call um, Ajax technologies, i.e. allow you to load and manipulate data in the background without having the browser sort of stall and hang to the user. So um, we, can, we can build things where we may want to be loading content from external sources like, um, I don't know, maybe RSS feeds or um, JSON feeds from things like YouTube and things like that. We can be loading that information in the background, manipulating manipulating that data um, without the user having to you know having to wait for that to happen. They can be interacting with other things while that happens. Um, it's not something you really need to get into with regard to touchdown because I'm going to give you a bit of a ground in in um, the specific functionality we're going to use today, which is the the, the, the tab system. Um, but if you ever do want to get into it, it's, I think it's one of the most intriguing parts of web development uh, in, in modern day. Um, it allows you to do things like, uh, if you use a jQuery mobile um, framework suite for instance, it allows you to quite easily build um, web applications that to a degree look like native applications for mobile devices, so yeah, um, iOS and Android and things like that. But uh, it's definitely something that if you've got any interest in in, in web design is uh, should be at the forefront of uh, the thing you should be looking into uh, getting into again it's one of those things that become it's becoming more and more popular it's ever updating it's ever changing um, and it's cool to work with so as you can see on the screen getting back to touchdown uh, pretty similar to where we left off last time I've got the web server preloaded I've got the web client preloaded uh, and as you can see uh, we do have a small tab interface on there, there's no content on it um, but this is our, our start point if you will um, I've took the liberty of picking out a theme for the tab system um, the black and grey that you can see there but you are welcome to ch choose your own uh, and change that to anything you want so um, I'll just break, quickly bring up the jQuery UI uh, web page um, if, you, if you want to look at the theme section uh, and then you can either customize your own theme with this roll your own section or you can just look at the gallery and choose something else that that may suit your um, profile a little better so at the, at, on this page we're looking at this tab section here this is a, a preview of how tabs would look with this default uh, UI likeness theme if for instance I wanted to try out the darkness theme I'll just click on it and it'll update the page with how that theme would, would look and again I've took the liberty of, of, uh, of picking one out for you um, if you decide that that's not not what you want to do, then you can you can change that any time. Just download the theme uh, and replace it out with with what you've chosen, which would be a simple case of um, editing the index file with the the CSS for the different uh, theme. So it'd just be a case of changing that name more than likely, and obviously making sure that it's actually in your CSS folder. So that's our Vader folder, you just put your custom folder, you know, the one that you want to change to in there and link to it in, in your index document and that should be enough to, to get you by. Okay, so again I'm not going to go into sort of downloading the, the whole user interface, uh, jQuery user interface um, file because much of it isn't, I wouldn't say it's not relevant to Touchdown but it's not something that we really need to touch upon in this tutorial. If you want to get into the more uh, intricate stuff that jQuery UI can do, if you want to add transitions and fades and flips and all of the tricks that come with that, then you're more than welcome to look into that yourself. But to, for, for, for what we're going to go through today, um, we're just going to look at this tab interface. So I've got the um, pre-made, unedited, you know, starting example file 
up in Dreamweaver at the moment. Um, as you can see, as where we left off before, there's quite a lot more in there than we, than than the blank page from the first example. We don't really need to worry too much about um, about that. I'm going to discuss a couple of things with you now. So. Um, the first thing to notice is that we've got a couple more files linked in the head section up here. So we've got the uh, the style sheet or the CSS file, which determines how um, our, our um, UI will look. Um, if you want to get into CSS again, it's something you can look into. But we're not we're not going to change it today. We're going to leave it at the at the default. It deals with things like these colors and spacing and um, fonts and things like that. But again something for you to look at in future. Um, we've got to load the the main jQuery core functions otherwise none of this will work and then there's another functions file which is specifically for um, the UI functions in this case the tabs function uh, and then I've obviously linked to our touchdown functions for the macros for the um, macros and um, pauses and then there's a little bit of a script here that needs to be in the page which just tells the the browser that when the page loads that it needs to initialize the tabs function within jQuery UI so from there on out it's pretty similar to what we've done before we're going to add content the same way um, we're going to create macros exactly the same way so I'm, I'm not really going to go into that too much I'm going to actually copy and paste some pre some uh, stuff that I've already pre-done uh, but the things you need to get your head around really is the whole everything that you're going to put in is it within this section this div id tabs section that is the overarching thing I mean you can see here there's a little on the right hand side there's a little bounding box around this content showing you where it's, what it's currently um, covering uh, the whole thing starts off with a list an unordered list which is what the ul stands for and then li is for each individual list item um, these are the the names here tab 1, tab 2, tab 3 and these will be the names of your tabs so you can change these to anything you want them. they're an arbitrary name that comes preloaded with jQuery UI but they are quite descriptive just to tell you that this is tab 1, this is tab 2, this is tab 3 that's all good so I am actually going to have because I'm quickly recreating a profile I've already done for uh, Armed Assault uh, I'm going to call this page this tab, sorry, squad I'm going to call this one um, movement and I'm call the last one radio. Okay, and you can see that these are wrapped with uh, an A hyperlink, an A anchor hyperlink, uh, and that the content of that, the, the reference, you know, the, the target, if you will, uh, is a pound sign which tells. Um, tells the browser that it's, it's not a, a reference to something external, it's a, more like a command uh, and that it wants to go to tabs dash one. So if you look down here below the list we've got three separate div sections and they've all got names that correspond with that but without the pound sign. So I'm sure you could pretty much follow along that when you click this link with this name it's going to load the content for this tab and likewise below this tabs two with the movement you click on that tab uh, it's going to tell it that it wants to load the content for tabs too, so it's going to load whatever content is loaded in this section. So what we're going to do is we're going to just put some little comments in here so we can come back to this, because as you add more and more content it's going to be more and more difficult to find the sections that you want to maybe adjust or mess around with. But uh, I'm just going to put a, co a comment in here so we can come back to this later. So this is a comment for us to read. The browser is not going to interpret this so we can put whatever we want just to remind us. So I'm just going to put page one and I also usually like to put a close as well. to separate my content up so it makes it easy for me to follow along there because I mean I may come back, back to some of this content months or even years after I built it and it's hard to at times remember what your thought process was at the time so I'm just 
opening these up a little bit make it nice and uh, legible so again the contents going to be loaded within these little divided tabs and then the number section so this is where I would add the content for tab 1 tab 2 and tab 3 so I've got that content pre-written in these uh, text files so I'm going to start with tab 1 let's format that code so it's a little easier to follow along with so there we go so it's pretty much as we've had before, it's just rows of, of images, pre-made images that I've uh, put together with the JavaScript macro commands already attached uh, in nicely ordered groups of seven in a row and four rows. So again this is exactly as we've done before, we've got an, an image with a source attribute loading the, the image in the images folder, in this case squad underscore all underscore off dot give uh, and then an, an alternate text tag but I've not at this point I've not filled in the the uh, the attribute I've left it blank it will still pass um certi validation sorry not certification um so it is valid markup but um I've left them blank for the time being just for for time considerations generally best practice as a web developer is to make sure that those are populated um but again just for time purposes I've left them blank in this instance um, so yeah, that's the first tab section complete. We've got the buttons there, the other functions are there, um, and we just want to click on Live View, and you'll see that uh, you know it's all within the the tab. If I click on another tab, they're obviously currently blank. Go back to it, images are there again. That's exactly what we want. I've just realised I'm missing some content, so I'm just going to add that at the bottom. As I said to you in a previous video, that the page does require an element, otherwise the JavaScript functions will refuse to work. So let me just put that in before I forget. So that should be good. That should work fine. Uh, but obviously we need to add the content for the other two sections so I'm just going to briefly do that so page two so we're just looking at putting that in there between the opening and closing diff statement and section three and again I'm just going to format that code so it's a little neater with the indenting and what have you okay so now if we look at the the visual side we have all three sections I should just add as well sorry for anybody's noticed that it obviously doesn't look like it should do uh, in the visual editor that's because um, it doesn't load up um, external files while we're working with this so the, the styling information and obviously the the jQuery J JavaScript stuff isn't actually loaded right now. It's not. It's not actually performing any functions yet. So if I just click on this live view over here, or obviously load it in a browser, it will show me as it should look. So we're happy with that. I'm going to save that. So all the tabs are set as they should be. The squad's got all the squad information. The movement's got all the movement information, and the radio page's got all the radio information. So coming back out onto the desktop. I'll close those, but never mind. So I'm just going to briefly refresh, and load up all my new information. So now in my web client, I've got the, the profile as it stands loaded. Um, I've got the tabs all working fine. They all work perfectly fine there. Let's just double check the functionality. Hopefully, I haven't broke anything. Okay, so as you can see, that button's worked. We'll use these ones down here. Click on movement. So there we have it. A multi tab touchdown interface. Nice and easy to use. All working as it should be. Um, hopefully, that's enough 
to allow you to create um, these slightly more intricate profiles. Um, the tab system is, is much like um, you've seen if you've ever used programs like TouchBuddy and things like that. It just allows, just allows you to have more content in the same space and because we're using it this way um, there's no incurred latency. As you can see there I'm, I'm clicking on these pages and even though it's obviously on the same machine there's you know, I mean, there's, 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 not, there's not any latency involved in images having to be, you know, waiting for images to load and, and things like that. And that's the beauty of having things loaded all on the, the initial page load. It's all it's loaded in one, not having to click on, when we click on a tab and then load additional content, wait for that content to be pulled into the page. Because um, obviously, in the heat of, of, of your game session, you don't want to have to be waiting for the interface to, to catch up with what you want to do. But yeah, hopefully that's enough to get the ball rolling for people. Um, there's not a lot much more I can say so enjoy having a fiddle with jQuery UI and uh, I'll catch you next time.